Hi, Grad Rebels. Welcome to the Graduate College. We're so excited to have you as graduate assistants. We are going to ask some current Grad Rebels to provide you with some advice so your experience as graduate assistants can be as beneficial as possible. So here we go. We're going to start off by having our panelists introduce themselves. Dustin, will you please start us off? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Dustin Davis. I am a third year PhD student in the interdisciplinary health sciences program. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and I moved out here in August of 2019. I have been a graduate assistant for the Department of Kinesiology and Nutrition Sciences, and then also for the Graduate College. And so both of those experiences have been absolutely fantastic for me. And uh, my focus of my research is exercise and mindfulness. So bridging those two, focusing on our bodily sensations, our thoughts and how we feel while we're exercising to try to alleviate anxiety and depression among undergraduate students. Thanks. Thanks, Dustin. Elizabeth, you wanna go next? Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Johnson. I'm, a, um, I'm not a graduate assistant, but I was in 2013 to 2016 for the, um, while I was getting a master's in fine arts. Currently, I'm a PhD student in anthropology um, and I'm in my second year. Uh, my focus is on social bonding um, with animals and how people social, uh, socially bond together uh, while incorporating animals. All right. Thank you. Aldo, will you go next? Hello, everyone. My name is Aldo Barrita. I'm an incoming third year doctoral student at the Psychological and Brain Science PhD program um, with an emphasis on social psychology. I work under the um, advisement from Dr. Gloria Wumpa and my research focuses on racial microaggressions and everyday experiences with discrimination and how people of color uh, cope with uh, these uh, instances. Um, I have been working with the Graduate College since my first year, and last year I was a, a UNLV uh, ambassador, and I'm a UNLV ambassador as well this year. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aldo. And Joe? Hi, everyone. I'm a, I guess it will be a fifth year coming up, a PhD student in the Department of Anthropology. I'm now ABD, which is great, but also scary at the same time. <laughs> And uh, I, so what my research, I uh, apply post-colonial paradigmatic theoretical frameworks to uh, investigate conflict in the southwestern borderlands. Um, I'm, I have been a GA for the Department of Anthropology and I'm currently a GA for the Graduate College. Thank you, Joe, and thank you all for joining us today to share your experiences and share some advice with incoming graduate assistants. So we'll move on to our first question, and that is, what UNLV resources have you found to be most helpful in succeeding as a GA? Would you like me to start, Ned? Sure. Okay, awesome. So I think first and foremost, I think that your primary advisor is the most important person that you can form a good working relationship with. That person will be there to help you hopefully choose what classes that you should take, figure out research opportunities, maybe grant opportunities, and also help you make sure that you're following your plan of study so that you're on the timeline to graduate on time. And I think beyond that, uh, People that have really helped me in my home department are administrative assistants and coordinators. I don't think that those people get enough credit for how important they are to the success of graduate students. So forming good working relationships with them and figuring out uh, how to work with them uh, professionally so that you can get into the classes that you need and find rooms to maybe host um, events or, or your presentations for maybe your oral exam or defense. Those are all important things. And then beyond that, on a campus level, the graduate college has been the biggest resource uh, for my professional development outside of what I get in the classroom. I mean, Grad Rebel Writing Boot Camp, workshops, being a Grad Rebel Ambassador, getting involved with the graduate college has helped me become more effective as an academic, and that's what I plan to do after graduating. So I think that please, I would recommend please get involved with the graduate college. 
Thanks, Dustin. Yeah. Elizabeth, you want to add anything? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would second that. Um, ideally, awesome. getting involved with the graduate college has been really helpful with me and becoming a more successful academic. And then also the most um, important thing I found as a GA was communication with um, your graduate coordinator. Just ideally your goals um, in a GA ship is, is to do something that you feel is going to be successful in promoting your career and your career goals. Um, and so communicating that with your graduate coordinator and then um, kind of going back and forth with what opportunities are available is super helpful and beneficial in your overall program. I'll follow up and I will just say echo everything that uh, what Dustin, Dustin and Elizabeth have said. Um, definitely having a good communication uh, with your main advisor is key. Uh, because that probably is the person that will uh, support you the most through the program, hopefully. Um, the graduate color coordinator within your program also has a lot of connections and knowledge about the requirements for, you know, what you need to complete for classes and the different milestones within your program. And, and at, at the college level, I will say, yeah, the graduate college, all their additional resources and programs that they have to offer where you can get involved and get leadership experience, get more academic experience, mentorship experience, research experience. It's pretty cool. It's also pretty cool to also be mentoring undergrad students from UNLV and, and see how they also grow within their own programs. That's really, um, pretty rewarding. I will also say the social justice center within UNLV, it's also uh, um, very beneficial and has a lot of additional resources. Yeah, I'll echo everything everyone said. Uh, advisor, great relationship there. And I'll add too in the department, you also, uh, it's good to uh, have a relationship with your department chair. Uh, mine has helped me uh, several times in some difficult cases that I've had uh, while I was teaching. Um, and on that regard too, you want to at least know um, where the Office of Student Conduct is and work with different people there, it's, it's good to have. Uh, and also, going on that, uh, the Graduate College is a great resource, and if you have any difficulties with any, navigating any process of graduate school and being a GA, which you will find that maybe financial aid, maybe other things, health insurance, different things like that, it's great just to talk to people at the Graduate College. The staff here is amazing. They will get you what you need and they will help you out, regardless of what the issue is. <laughs> Thank you. So our next question and what everyone wants to know is how do you manage your time between your GA, academic, and personal responsibilities? Dustin, you want to start us off? Sure, yeah. So I've experimented with a few different ways of trying to keep everything uh, in order. When I was in my master's program, getting ready to join a PhD program or enroll in one, one of my advisors said that doing a PhD program is sometimes like juggling. You throw a lot of balls in the air and you have to catch one and throw it up really fast and catch the next one and just keep working through. And it can be really overwhelming when you have a lot of competing responsibilities. While it's overwhelming, sometimes it's also really rewarding. And I think that you can alleviate some of that overwhelm by using different techniques to manage your time. Google Calendar is my best friend um, to schedule things that I need, setting reminders. I've used a physical planner. I've also used an, uh, online programs, things like Todoist, to just keep track of what I need to do and when. Um, so I think that balancing all that on your uh, own is hard. So ask others in your cohort and your advisor how they do it. And just make sure you maintain open communication with the people that are there to help you so that you can keep everything in order. I would agree with that. Your mental health is super important. So make sure that you calendar. Um, ideally, uh, what I like to tell, so I also work as an academic advisor and I like to tell my undergraduate students and I wholly live by this. Um, Ultimately, you want to calendar your time in as you start out, um, even lunch, uh, breakfast, those times. If you calendar and make time for yourself, it helps you to establish your habits and 
essentially um, form some sort of time management skills that benefit you for the GA ship, the hours that you do for that, and then your personal time, and then the hours that you're committing to your schoolwork. I love this question because it kind of makes the assumption that we actually manage our time <laughs> well. <laughs> no, and I, I was like thinking, I don't know about myself. Um, I procrastinate a lot. That's just the truth. Um, and you know, procrastination speaks from a psychological perspective to something that gives you a lot of anxiety. And as a coping mechanism, you just paralyze and put it off as long as you can. So it's just a it's a normal response that uh, we actually have. Um, with something that gives you a lot, a lot of anxiety. So for me, I definitely use Google Calendar uh, a lot. It's everything that I must have done, it's in there, meetings, deadlines, uh, even when I'm supposed to just start brainstorming something new, I just put a reminder there. Sometimes I change the date, you know, I push it out, it doesn't need to be, but they're there, like there. Um, uh, and I think that that's one efficient way writing to do list you daily. It's a good accomplishment just to scratch things off your list. Even if it was the minimal, it just feels like you got something done and was not a unproductive day. And also like scheduling time off and allowing yourself to, to just give that time off without guilt, even though guilt will still be there um, because that's just real academia. Um, but yeah, reminding you that it's okay and just taking the time off whenever you can, learning to say no. Um, because you'll want to do everything and you'll get invitations to everything and you'll feel like this is the only time you can say yes, but more opportunities eventually show up. So learning to say no, it's also key. Yeah, that's learning to say no is a, is a skill that needs to be cultivated. Uh, and one thing I will say too, is you need to set aside time. And that's, I think that's what we're all kind of saying. Um, for me, I, I set aside time for, for each, everything. Um, my research, I set aside in my calendar. I have half an hour for research every morning, half an hour for writing every morning and to get in the habit of writing and doing your research every day, even if it's a half hour, even if it's an hour, that's fine. You just need to set aside time for you to do that at those tasks. And then I also set aside personal time. Sundays for me are the time for my me and my fiance. So you need to set time for yourself. Uh, maybe some video game time every Saturday, or set aside time uh, for whatever tasks. Like I'm also into crafts. I like leather working, so I set aside time for that. Um, and then definitely set aside time for family. That's that's vital, um, and it helps keep you sane to be able to. Talk to someone about what you're going through and have a confidant is definitely something that's helped me out. Thank you all. So, what have you learned as a GA that you wish you had known when you started? I would say that I wish I knew when I started that I'm not the only one that's flying by the seat of my pants a lot of the time. <laughs> um, I came in and I looked around, I said, wow, there are a lot of really talented, hardworking people that seem to be highly intelligent, driven, and uh, ready to succeed. And I was like, I think I might be the only one that's not. <laughs> um, even though I did well in my master's program, and I think that the imposter syndrome of thinking that I'm not good enough, I'm not hardworking enough, I'm not capable, is something that's felt by a lot more people than just me. And it took me a while to realize that it's a shared feeling and that it helps to talk to people in your cohort, outside of your cohort, with your faculty, with your advisor about those feelings because you're not the only one and you are capable and you will succeed if you just put in effort. I think for me, um, I jumped around with GA a lot with my GA um, and I worked uh, to do um, a TA with photography and then I went to sculpture and then I went over to the Barrick Museum. And um, I, I think because it was such a new experience for me, I didn't um, necessarily communicate as well like we talked about in the beginning um, with my um, advisor and my coordinator to 
decide what I really wanted to focus on. Um, and I think I just didn't know at the time. So it was maybe more so on my end. Um, so getting that opportunity to jump around was really helpful. But if I had known already what I wanted to do, um, then I would probably have stick, stuck with uh, the same GA ship for a longer period of time um, working with the Barrick Museum. Um, I think learning to ask for help early on, it's that it's okay to ask questions. And like my first year GA ship was, as a teaching assistant for two classes uh, in psychology. And I remember giving the professor gave me the exams for me to grade. Um, that was one of my responsibilities every four or five weeks. And I had no idea the first time I was writing it, what I was good doing or if I was doing correctly. Um, I was being too harsh on myself. And I feel like I felt like I couldn't ask questions because I was going to look, you know, dumb or, you know, I didn't want to disappoint my uh, the professor. And I learned later on that it's okay just to ask those questions and, you know, like that everyone makes mistakes and no one comes here knowing everything. Yeah, I think uh, one thing I would like to have known is how to like, uh, this is something that we all experience with creating curriculums and learning how to properly assess um, great, uh, Grading assignments and doing things like that. I know I, I did have a little bit of uh, errors on my part in the beginning, and it, and that's the thing too. Learning, learning that um, it's okay to. There's all sorts of uh, institutions here and processes that will allow you, even if even if you mess up on grading and grades are due, you can still go and fix it. That's key to learning, learning that, that it is a bit of a process, but you, regardless of what happens when you're teaching, you can always fix the mistake. And it's okay to admit you think you're wrong. <laughs> Thank you all. So how do you navigate ensuring that your GA experience benefits your long-term academic and career goals? I think that this one. Uh, no, for, go ahead, yeah, Joe. This this one's something that I know as um, GA sometimes in our departments we're not really um, we can't really decide who our assignments are. But I think the key is is regardless of where your assignment is, take something away from it. Take something away from it that will build towards your career. Maybe it's creating a curriculum. Maybe it's how to grade assignments because all these skills will be great for your next step. And then also talking to your advisor, being vocal about what your next movement is going to be, where your path is so that he, they can help you to um, advocate for you for different positions. Uh, even like it, one point I was the website and social media uh, GA, and I was able to use that to know how to create um, uh, mailing lists and uh, different um, newsletters and how to uh, navigate different like OIT and different systems here. So uh, all these skills, any skill that you get can be used later. And just how to recognize, the important thing is how to recognize what skills how do you use those skills later? <laughs> I think that's key. Dustin, do you want to go next? Sure. I think uh, I'd like to first second what Joe said about communicating with your advisor and your supervisors uh, for your GA ship um, where you plan to go when you graduate. And I don't necessarily mean physical geographical location, I mean career trajectory. Because if those people that are guiding you know that early on, they can potentially help tailor your experience to give you the skills you need. So that's what Joe already said. What I'd like to add to it is that if you form good working relationships with your advisor, your supervisors, and other people who are helping to create your GA experience, 
those people will be critical for writing good letters of recommendation for you. And those are one of the most important things to securing a position after you graduate. So I think that for the reasons Joe said, but also for those letters of rec, it's really important to show your skill set to your advisors and supervisors, and then also ask them, um, you know, down the line, can you write this for me? And then you can also over time keep track of the things you have been doing successfully so that you can hand that over to, to them and say, hey, these are the things that we worked on together and what I accomplished. Could you please? frame these into a letter of rec so that my future employer knows what I've done. I would second all of that. <laughs> Ideally, uh, communication is the biggest key here where you want to just talk with your graduate coordinator, talk with um, supervisors, managers, just everybody um, who's related to your GA experience to get um, an idea of how this is going to prevent, uh, sorry, um, benefit your career goals um, and move move forward in a way that's successful for you. Yeah, I echo everything that everyone say. Um, I mean, GHIPs provide funding, right? And I think that's so important for every student um, in the graduate college. And I think that because every program will be different. You know, some programs will have uh, funding opportunities within their, their own department for many years. Some you will have to step out of your department to find those funding opportunities. I think that communication then is key from the from the first year with your advisor and even possible with the chair who will have probably best knowledge of the lines of funding that are available uh, for the department and how long, how many years those lines um, are available for students, right? Um, that way you can then start um, discussing what is your career goals and how many years can you get funding from your own department and in what type of positions and what years you probably have to step out of your department to look for, you know, GA, GAs outside within the graduate college or administrative roles or, or other things, right? And it's important then to, um, to match that with your career uh, goals because like, for example, I'm going into academia, so for me, it was important that at some point I get teaching experience, right? And so, uh, even though there will be, there's administrative and uh, research experience, research funding lines in my department, I specifically saw one for teaching because I wanted to get that experience. And talking to your advisor and your and the chair is key because they can advocate for that. They can really keep that in mind when they are placing, placing the students. So, communication is key from the get-go. Thank you. So, have you had more than one type of GA ship and what were the similarities and differences between those experiences for those of you that have had more than one? I have had right now, this is going to be my third GA line. So, my first year, I was a teaching assistant and my responsibility basically was assisting uh, um, professor in residence who taught three different courses in psychology. And most of my responsibilities were assisting with grading of the exams, preparing the exams, uh, helping with entering grades into web campus, uh, making copies, things like that. Sorry about that. My phone is going on now. Um, so that's that. Um, and then my second year, I jumped into a different line of GSE, which is, uh, it was to administer or manage um, the uh, diversity and inclusion committee within the department and which requires one graduate student. And that was, I do social justice research. So that was perfect for me. And that required matching students with uh, mentors, uh, creating events around social awareness and social justice awareness. So it was pretty, it was completely, it, it felt very activism related. So that was pretty cool. And this year I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to teach uh, as a uh, um, professor on record. So that's pretty cool. I followed a similar history at UNLV as, although I started off my first year as an, uh, as a GA teaching anatomy and physiology for my home department. And that experience was like all those I was, um, I was instructor of record, so I was responsible for teaching four two hour labs a week. So just being in the classroom teaching was eight hours and the rest of the time was hosting open lab hours, grading, answering emails, uh, scheduling one on one meetings with students as needed. 
And so there was more flexibility with my position then. And I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing. It's just that with teaching, it's a little bit more flexible in how you spend most of your 20 hours as a graduate assistant. And then I moved over to working for the graduate college, which has been a fantastic professional development opportunity. And I'm so grateful for it. It's structured differently in the sense that I'm not teaching and I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm helping to develop professional development materials for graduate students that are enrolled in UNLV or at UNLV and then also serving on committees. And, and so it's uh, more structured in the sense that I have a regular schedule, which is nice in its own right. You know, I work a certain number of hours every week at a certain time of day. And so it's not as flexible, but it's also nice for my schedule because I know exactly when I can be working and it offers that. It's also nice because I've met a lot of new people around campus, and I think that that was huge because it brought in my view and horizons beyond just my department on campus. So I would recommend getting involved in as many ways as possible with GAs on campus and keep your eyes open for you know opportunities outside of your department. Yeah, I had a similar to both Aldo and uh, Dustin. I started off as a um, teaching assistant. Um, and for that, I was a lot of grading, um, helping out, uh, develop curricula, different things like that. I was an instructor of record, um, and that that is great experience to learn how to teach. And even though um, I was teaching a physical anthropology lab, we had a core curriculum that was previously created that was tailoring that to your teaching style right, and figuring out how to give students hands-on experience. Uh, it was great experience. Um, I was also um, a website uh, and social media coordinator, um, which is is a lot of work, but it does like to give you the ins and outs and realize how how much effort it takes to do a social media account, um, especially a professional one, which is good for other things. If you're planning on your own doing your own social media as academic, which is becoming more increase, more increasingly important. Um, and then I was also, I think one thing that uh, has been mentioned, I was a research assistant, uh, which is, is also great experience. Um, doing research, uh, you work with a, a PI, and for me, I was, uh, I've done a couple different ones. One was really helping assisting my advisor in um, finding materials for his books, so different sources, helping them with that. Then the other one I was working on an archaeological project, uh, doing uh, geographical information systems, which I do have experience in. But uh, being a research assistant really lets you polish your skills. And um, even though you may not be working on your own research, it helps give you skills, it helps build up towards your own research. So I, I think it's very useful to do that if you can. And then I'm also at the graduate college, uh, just like uh, Dustin said, uh, working on developing different programs. It definitely helps give you an insight on how to work in administration and also how to develop your own programs in the future, wherever you're going to be going. You, you're likely to have service uh, requirements and creating a program I've been working on the grants program. So it's good to have that experience, be able to be like, oh, I can do that. I can be able to help admin as faculty to be able to create a program. For me, um, I TA'd my first year um, with sculpture and uh, photography, so two fine arts classes, um, which have only 15 students, which is likely smaller than other classes. Um, and I really got to um, have an, um, be able to help the students on almost a one-on-one -on -one level, which is really exciting for me. Um, I also um, had my uh, hours split up in tens. Uh, so I did some lab work as well, um, where I would uh, manage the chemicals and change out chemicals in the photography lab and the sculpture, sculpture lab, um, which was very different than the one on one experience with students, but I still got to help students in a system while I was working on the chemical management. Um, so that was exciting. And then um, I did switch out my last year to uh, work with the Barrick Museum and I had skill, I uh, gained skills in archiving. Um, and 
essentially management of materials, which was exciting as well. So I think they were very different experiences, but they also helped me um, with the career that I have now and uh, my goals for the future. Thank you. So this brings us to the end of our time together. Uh, Ting, thank you so much to our panel for sharing your experience and advice with new graduate assistants. And thank you to all of you who took time to watch this video. We hope you all have a successful year ahead.